Okay, so Mini's Forum have sent me a Windows 11 Mini PC from their Venus series. Let's have a look at what's inside the box. So we have a rather nice looking 120 watt power supply. Definitely a different design than you normally get with a decent sized barrel jack, full size HDMI cable, clover cable, various screws. And I always like when you get a monitor mount so we can basically make a very smart TV or a all-in-one computer. An instruction book and something that I don't know what it is. I think it's a SATA cable to mount a hard drive inside it, but we'll have a look in a minute. Now this has a 12th generation i9 processor and I recently reviewed a 13th generation i9 so I wasn't going to review it first of all but then I saw how much the price was and I figured I would. So in the UK this is 439 and in the US they do a variation for $425. It just struck me as really good value for an i9 a terabyte of storage and 32 gig of RAM and it is upgradable as well. As you can see from these mini PCs, it is on the larger side, but there's a good reason for that. So inside you can see that the storage it uses is an M.2 NVMe drive as its main storage. And as I say, I've got a terabyte of that. Uh, RAM, it can take two sticks of DDR4 RAM up to 64 gig. This is a 32 gig model. Uh, but also you can see there's a full size two and a half inch SATA drive. So if you want to add cheap storage uh, and SATA drives, especially mechanical drives, uh, go up to huge sizes now for really very little money. So you can put that inside the case, which I think is a nice touch. Uh, a lot of them are just going for NVMe, uh, which is more expensive storage, but then it is faster. So it depends what you're using it for. So connectivity on the front, we've got a three and a half mil audio jack. Uh, we've got a reset button, power button, and two USB 3.2 Gen 2. Nothing on the sides, just vents. On the back we've got a power delivery port, uh, so you can actually power it with the USB-C. It's also a display port as well, so we can connect a monitor. Power supply, full-size HDMI, 2.5G LAN, uh, display port, couple more USB-A sockets and a Kensington dock, and a bit more ventilation as well. On the bottom we've got four nice rubber feet, and there's quite a bit of space in there. So between the drives and the bottom of the unit, there's yeah quite a lot of space and the cooling is at the top of it. So I've gone with a bit of a minimal setup first of all. I'm just plugging the mini PC into the monitor with a USB-C cable. So the mini PC is powering the monitor and I've got my mouse keyboard plugged in and you can see I'm using this mount arm. And I'll just do my initial window setup so I can get everything going. So this is two monitors and if I grab this you can see that it's all working nicely and uh, the touchscreen still continues to work on this main one. So this is plugged in with an HDMI cable. As you can see here, lovely short cable going from the back of this mini PC uh, into this display. So let's also plug something into DisplayPort. And the only DisplayPort connection I've got is in my son's room, uh, so I thought it would be worthwhile just showing the comparison of size between his gaming PC and this mini PC. So here's the three monitor setup. The middle display is the DisplayPort display. This one is going through USB-C and uh, as you can see it's in portrait mode uh, because I've got it up on its end. So we can drag it across from one computer to another to another. See it changes resolution, that's because this display is I think something like 1366 by 768. Uh, I'm not sure what this is, probably 1440, it's my son's. And this one is 1920 by 1080. But yeah, definitely working fine. Let's see how easy this is to set up as an all-in-one PC. So if we spin this around, on the back here you have four holes and they're a certain distance apart. So in the case of this, I think it's seven and a half. Yeah, seven and a half uh, or 75 mil. Uh, some of them could be 100 mil, 200 mil and so on. So the adapter that comes with it has 75 mil holes and also 100 mil holes. So I can see how they've done it. We've got a couple of screw holes in here and that obviously clips on. So we'll be using some of these thicker screws into here. So they'll go that way. Yeah, so they need to come out a little bit. It actually uses the rubber of the feet as well to kind of secure it in place. Yeah, so that holds on really quite nicely. So what I have to do is take that off and screw it to here. So like that, so the powers on the top would be the best way. Yeah, that's really secure, that's not going anywhere. So cable-wise, 
I have got a short HDMI cable here, but I have got shorter. I can't remember where I got this one, but it's very useful for things like this. So one in here. So we've got the HDMI cable, we've got mouse keyboard plugged in here as well. Uh, and these two cables that come out of the monitor will be one powering the mini PC, one powering the monitor. So you could make them into one with some trunking of some sort, make it really neat. And I've got an incredibly tidy mini PC with an i9 processor, 32 gig of RAM, for probably around about the 500 pound mark. Because you don't pay much for a 22 inch monitor now. Just log in. And if we have a look from the back, looking pretty neat. And I like the way we've got that power switch on the top there. If you take off the four rubber feet, you have access to four screws, which allows you to easily remove the base. And inside you can see a full size uh, 2280 NVMe drive. That's a terabyte in this one. And two sticks of 16 gig RAM. Uh, what's interesting is the NVMe drive has got cooling on it, which you normally don't get a heat sink on drives in mini PCs, or I don't think I've seen any so far. So let's pull that off. Oh, actually, they don't need the rubber bands, really, because this has got a big uh, thermal pad in between. So I can't see what the drive is, but I can have a look through Windows. That will tell me what this is. So I can pop that back in. And the cable is just a SATA adapter, so you can see SATA on here with, I'm not sure what that connection is, but you can see there's a connection on the board here that that plugs into. So if you want to add a two and a half inch drive, it would screw into here. So it'll basically be on the base of the unit. And I'm actually going to put a drive in. So this is only a 60 gig Kingdian drive, but it's got, I think, Chrome OS Flex on it. But it'll also mean that if I want to try some other operating systems, it's super easy without having to repartition the NVMe drive. So I'm going to pop that into there. Oh, I think they've also supplied screws for this as well. So let's pop all four of those in. So that's not going anywhere. Let's plug this cable in. Not sure which way around. Yeah, that feels secure. And uh, let's just move it around like this and pop it back together again. Not sure what key gets me the boot menu, so let's try. So I pressed the delete key on boot up and I get a very nice screen here. What have we got? BBS menu, boot options, UEFI shell. Let's just try boot and see what it gives me. Yeah, it's booting into Chrome OS Flex. There you go. So this, is, uh, this was already installed on the other drive. Uh, well, just to try it first, I could install it onto the NVMe or onto the drive that it's on. Uh, it wants my network, so I'll just put the password in for that. And we just browse as a guest just to check that it's all working and all compatible and everything. So we've got our window snapping here. Let's just go to YouTube. And obviously, really fast. You know, they talk about Chromebook Plus. Uh, this is super fast on an i9. So if we go Lee, PSP video, 4K, and just launch this one. I haven't got any sound in here at the moment because this monitor doesn't support audio, but let's just go straight up to 4K and full screen just to show that that's playing with Chrome OS Flex. Right, what else can we install on this drive? So uh, I think what I might do is just shut this down, boot into Windows, and try Batasera, because I haven't tried it for a little bit, which is a multi-game emulator system. So I've been installing a few things. So uh, I've installed Steam and a few games, and I've installed the Epic Game Store. And this was a free game recently, but I think it might be a bit ambitious on a computer without a GPU. So it's got integrated graphics, but not a dedicated graphics card. So if you go to system requirements here you can see minimum uh, they're asking for a gtx 660 graphics card so well we'll give it a go and see what happens it's a 24 gig download so let's click on that and install it we've got plenty of space let's try some of these games that should be a bit easier to run so dirt showdown i'm not sure how old that is let's give it a try okay just turned off all the music Let's just jump into a quick race. 
All the menus are lovely and fast, very smooth. Haven't changed any other settings apart from just turned off the music. Oh, looks pretty good. Yeah, it's definitely handling that, no problem. That feels nice and fast. Oh, nice start. Let's get out of this bit. Yeah, you can see that it's handling that nicely at 1080. And again, haven't changed anything at all. So, yeah. Certainly copes, considering it's integrated graphics, pretty well. Ooh. So let's quit out of that. So what else have we got in Steam? Portal 2, which I've never played. I played a bit of Portal 1 testing out on a PC, but I've never tried Portal 2. And I've got this Final Hours as well. There is a framed painting on the wall. Yeah. Please go stand in front of it. Now, please return to your bed. Oh dear. Hello? Anyone in there? <laughs> Are you back? Ah, no, no, you look um, good, looking good actually. Are you okay? Are, are you? The 10,000 bloody test subjects I'm supposed to be in charge of. Why? Cooks! Hello, and again, it's a great start. Temperature Science Enrichment Center. We are currently experiencing technical difficulties. Yeah, well, it's definitely coping with that, no problem at all. It's lovely and fast, lovely and smooth, and no issues at all. If cube and button based testing cause this emergency, don't worry, the odds of this happening twice are very slim. So, I'll try something else. So, Chivalry has installed, but unfortunately, it fails on boot. But it does this. And uh, it could be just a lack of graphics card. So let's close that down and try something else. So I've installed Batacera onto the 60 gig disk. But what it does is creates the system and then you would normally have a ROMs partition. But that doesn't seem to be showing up for me. And I think it's some sort of secure boot that it's doing. Because if I go into disk management, uh, you'll see that the drive does show up. So this 47 uh, gig is where I should be able to put my ROMs but for some reason it doesn't show up. So I think I'm gonna boot it with uh, a Linux distribution to be able to put the ROMs on there. So let's shut this down. And I've got Ventoy on this USB stick which allows you to install multiple operating systems. So I'm just starting that up and I'm gonna start tapping delete. And that gives us the BIOS. So I can go to boot options and find the one which is this one. That's got Ventoy on it. I can go back and save that and then just hit boot and then we can pick an operating system. Let's just go with Ubuntu in normal mode and try. Let's copy a game over to the PS2 folder. So let's try a bit of GameCube as well and I'll do Tomb Raider into the GameCube folder. So yeah, GameCube. So it doesn't look like any problem here, looks quite nice and smooth. No slowdown or anything which is good. What's my boost? I don't know what boost is. That one. Right, right button. Yeah, that's definitely working absolutely fine. Lovely. So let's quit out of that. And just try GameCube. So... We put in Tomb Raider. So I haven't changed any settings on this at all. And if we have a look around, yeah, that's absolutely fine. We should be able to uh, really up the resolution on this because the graphics are pretty low. Yeah, so looks like no problem with GameCube, at least on this game. And up. Very nice. So let's shut down Batacera. I think I'll try PS3 in a standalone emulator. So this is RPCS3 and uh, EA Sports Grand Slam Tennis 2. Sound seems alright. Oh. 
Okay, I'm not really used to the controls on this, but it seems to be working fine. Nice and smooth, the audio's good. Oh, nice. Yeah, definitely happy with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Does look good. Oh, I don't know what I did there. And one thing worth showing, when you've got an Xbox controller uh, plugged in, if you press the Xbox button, it launches Steam. But if you press it again, uh, because I do a bit of PC gaming on a TV, it's really handy to have this Xbox style interface. And uh, I've even added Epic Games to mine so that I can launch Epic Games and then Fortnite, which isn't a Steam game. But if you want to launch a game, you just click on it and it tells you various different things about it, but you can also launch the game and uh, various other things with settings. But if you also press and hold that button, it gives you all these options and you can just shut it down. So if you don't have a keyboard handy, uh, you can turn it all off just with a controller. So I mentioned before I'd find out what the uh, storage was because I couldn't see it because it had the heatsink on it. So let's have a look at disk drives. Oh yeah, so it's a Kingston drive. That's the 60 gig drive SSD that I put in. But yeah, so it comes with a Kingston drive. Nice to see, decent brand. And I've been having a look at the overall specs and it is really impressive. And this i9-12900HK would be their top end model. Uh, so this is one that's high performance, but also ability to overclock, which I haven't tried the overclocking, but I did see some things in the BIOS about how you can change how much power goes into it. And remember this was a 120 watt power supply and you can see maximum turbo power, 115 watts. And if I close that one down, uh, there was a story with XDA developers where they compared the M1 Max versus the 12th gen and they actually used this processor, which I thought was good. So which one should you buy? Intel's new 12th gen Alder Lake chips offer significant improvements over anything we've seen from the company in the past, even when compared to Apple's best mobile chip for MacBook Pro notebooks. The 12900HK is able to hold its own without any issues. There's a thing about this. So basically, Apple really sort of changed the market when they brought out the first M1 chip in 2020. And this chip came out in January 2022. So it was kind of Intel really making a big improvement on their processors. They kind of sort of chugged along normally and then Apple came out with their M1 ARM-based processors and they really made a jump. And you can see that here if we compare the 12th gen i9 to the 11th gen i9. And if we scroll through, so 14 cores and 20 threads is up from only eight cores and 16 threads. So a huge jump there. And if we have a look at the benchmarks, so you can see here, single core performance was 15% up, but then we've got about 27% up in multi-core performance. Cinebench also 20%. Again, in multi-core, much, much bigger performance increase. And uh, that's kind of the pattern really. So the 11th to 12th was a big jump the 12 to 30, not much of a jump, but it is an improvement. So obviously it's a year newer, but because they've made that big change, you can see here, 14 cores, 20 threads, and lots of similarities. And when we look at the benchmarks, it's always beating it, but it's not beating it by a huge margin. You can see multi and single core is pretty similar across the board. So yeah, overall, really good value for money. And even though it's the 12th gen, so it's a few years old, when you can get it for this sort of price, with a terabyte drive, with 32 gig of RAM. I really am impressed with it, and uh, I'll definitely be playing around with it. I might start to overclock with it, but obviously not in this video. Anyway, thanks very much to Minis Forum for sending me this to test. Hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.